Welcome to our viewers in Guinea and around the world. I'm Dialu Sanusi Galish Jr. You are watching the Bridge 365. Here's the headline. After 13 years, a Guinean citizen went to the poll Sunday to elect a local official, a journey mixed with calm and violence. The final partial result of the local election are expected today, Friday, February 9, 2018. This announcement is made Thursday by Metro Salifu Kebe, president of the National Independent Electoral Commission. It is prohibited to sell, buy and consume lactalis group infant milk from France and sold throughout the entire Guinean territories. This announcement is made by Mark Yumbuno, Trade Minister. According to South African Daily, President Jacob Zuma has agreed to resign but only with certain conditions such as immunities. A motion has been filed by the opposition. The vote would take place in 10 days. And the Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl 52 champion after upsetting the New England 41-33 win. We'll discuss all that in a moment. And once again, welcome on the Bridge 365. After 13 years, Guinean citizens went to the poll Sunday to elect a local official from the city hall of Kaloum, Dixin, Matam, Ratoma and Matoto. The vote took place in calm in some places, but in other polling stations, the situation was out of control. Gimbaya, at 7 a.m. this morning, a handful of voters observed the final setting before the commencement of the vote. Shortly after, Ibrahim Diallo is the first to slip the ballot. His wishes, transparency, and appeasement for this process. We are waiting for clear and transparent results that will be proclaimed with peace and tranquility. Before our eyes, the members of this party started to vote without having voted first. Ask, they explain. We have to give respect to the old people. Then later on, we can vote. Miles away in Kisoso is the notorious absence of voters in this polling station house in Kumanjan Keita High School. Only a few show up, as an example, this handicap. I love my country. I want my voice to count. So the member of this polling station complained about the lack of badge. What seems incomprehensible this morning is the erection of this school room in a new polling station relocated in the neighborhood. He did not record any voters this morning, RPG's representative complains. The office was moved. It was supposed to be at Kumanjan Primary School. I did not ask for the cause, but I went to him he told the manager to guide people to the polling station. At Sangoya City Primary School, it is also a voters' wedding. In one of the polling stations, no citizen show up. There's nobody here now. I don't know if people want to vote or not. It is calm here. We are waiting on voters. In this wedding is the minister, Kawakari, who arrives. The world is watching us. The world is watching us. The world will judge us. Fortunately, God gave us a long life to live this moment. So I ask for calm and serenity and for the maintenance of peace because tomorrow Guinea will continue to live. The inadequate presence of voters have been obvious since the beginning of the vote in Dabundi with a 16 polling station. Here, someone fraudulently try to vote. At Adamatunkara school, we saw a supervisor who gave the authorization card to other people to allow them to vote. We point out to the agent, they have taken measures. Shortly after, we learned the arrest of two young people by the security unit of the local election who engage in this unlawful practice. Now let's take a look at USO 2018, a special security unit put together by President Alpha Conde to secure the local elections. Present everywhere, the special security unit for the local election security was established following an announcement of the Armed Force Commander-in-Chief. In the degree, 
Alpha Condé instruct the mixed team, including the national gendarmerie, police and civil protection, to ensure the smooth conduct of February 4, 2008, vote. Our responsibility is to secure the members of the polling station, secure the electoral material, and make a kind of balance on the inflow and outflow of the different citizens who come to vote. Have a wolf eyes on every move for a peaceful election. The Special Unit for Securing Election, abbreviated as USO 2018, is deployed as follows. The territorial unit that carries out the static missions, I mean, that's the unit that is displaced at the level of the polling station. Then there are the unit of intervention that are stationed at places to intervene in case of necessity. Some polling stations have experimented disturbance. For instance, members who fraudulently try to vote, more than one observer of the same party found in the same polling station, and more surprisingly, an individual found with gun in hand at the polling station. In addition, the general coordinator of USO 2018 set the record straight. The first element is the penal code. The second is the electoral code. So we know the content of these codes. And when you are momentarily stranded because you just want to cause a trouble, and when you are momentarily stranded, you answer before the law. There is nothing else to do, you will answer. In order to understand how information is relayed to the security unit, we went to the operation center of the so-called unit, the brain of the team. There, every move is followed closely a commando team involving behind the scene. Now, to facilitate the communication in case of danger or not between the trio, population agent of USOL and the operation center, seven numbers are operational, including a green number, which is 102. The convenience of records to the Centralization Commission was adrenalized by violence. Several records and ballot boxes were torn apart and vandalized by militant or political party who stormed Matam City Hall, a point of centralization. A total disaster recorded at Matam Centralization voting result. Let's take a look. Security and organization of fiasco in the receptions of polling station result. Frustrated activists from political parties stormed the city hall of Matam before election security unit and the commissioner of centralization tried to control the situation. It all started with citizens who refused the access to security vehicles with the result and demand the presence of all polling station members including political party delegate in the centralization room. Angry militant torn and vandalized records. President of polling stations was subject to contemptuous and dismissive behavior. They attacked me with the result in hands. They ripped my clothes. I suggest to the National Independent Election Commission, CENI, to suspend the result of Matam Township. No reliable result came out of here. People attacked me. They told me to take out everything I had. I told them that I only have my polling station result, that I need to drop at the city hall. They took everything I had in my pocket, my money and my two phone. I went back to the town by the courtesy of this gentleman who was very nice to me. There was nobody to look at me, nobody to listen to me. In this scuffle adrenalized by violence and voting result destruction, the security forces and the members of centralization recognized this fiasco. It's unfortunate. It shouldn't happen. But you have to see what the citizen did. Wait, wait. They put all the work that we did this morning. Look at this. A few years ago, how many Guinean died? Sir, please. Until midnight on Sunday, 
Some results from the 245 polling station in Matam were expected. For fear of this violence, order couldn't get to the result, to the centralization. The final partial results of the local election are expected today, Friday, February 9, 2018. This announcement was made Thursday by Metro Salif Kibbe, president of the National Independent Electoral Commission, during a meeting with the media. Regarding the reception of records, as of today we have certain number. I believe 170, 175 records. Among those 170, there are few that are subject of indictment before the judge. From Bokeh, we are received, I mean, we are waiting on 37, but so far we have received 26. In Conakry, we are waiting on 5, currently we have 2. For now, we are waiting on 42 records. We have 27. Cancan, Can -can 58. We have 20. Kindia, Kindia, we are waiting on 45. As of now, we have 27. Labé, 53. We have received 29. Mamou, 36. Mamou, 36. We have 31. And Zero Kore, 48 records. PV. We have received five. Therefore, we believe we have received around 45 or 50 percent of records. The president of the National Independent Electoral Commission confirmed that they will publish only records that are not subject of indictment. It's continued to come. But what I wanted to point out is that among the lot of records that came to us, there are those who are subject of indictment before the judge. Therefore, we cannot comment on them because the commitment is to wait till the judge decide that we can announce the result. But for those who are not part of the indictment, or those whose litigation time is exhausted, we can give the result. Certainly, tomorrow. The participation rate in the local election of February 4th is estimated at 53%, according to Kofik, the coalitions of Guinean to women and girl. Let's take a look. According to Estimate, the local election participation rate turned around 53%. This information was declared by COFIG, Coalitions of Guineans, Women and Girls. It should be noted that COFIG has deployed 700 observers across the country and 13 watch hold, but they deplore the abstention rate. The local election participation rate turned around 53%. Obviously, this figure is still provisional. The results are coming back and forth, but still, for a local election, it is too small. According to Dr. Makali Traoré, president of the COFIG, the difficulties were at four levels. The first is the power management and the irrigation, the power that one person gives to the other to act on his behalf. The second is the fact that some officers have experienced the presence of armed men, then the lack of polling booth some clash with the police. However, she asserted that these cases are not sufficient to question the sincerities of the vote. It is a decision that resonates like a thunderclap. It is prohibited to sell, buy and consume lactalis group infant milk from France and so throughout the entire Guinea territories. This announcement is made by Mark Yumbuno, the trade minister, but also warning of a possible threat to children's health. Dans le cadre de la protection des consommateurs, et ce, à la suite de l'alerte des autorités sanitaires européennes concernant le lait infantile destiné aux enfants en bas âge, contaminé par la salmonelle, il est demandé impérativement à tout un chacun de cesser toute vente, tout achat, et toute consommation de lait du groupe Lactaris sous les marques suivantes. Lait sans lactose pico, 
Pepti Junior, Millimètre Bio sans huile de palme et les Célia. Par ailleurs, toute personne détenant un lot quelconque de ces produits est tenue d'informer dans les meilleurs délais les ministères de la Santé et du Commerce. Je vous remercie pour l'application de ces instructions qui vont dans le sens de la protection de la santé de nos populations. Merci. After a year at the African Union, the Guinean president Alpha Conde passes the torch to his running counterpart Paul Kagame. The tenant of Sigutural leaves the head of the Pan-African Union after engaging several reform. After a year at the head of the African Union, the Guinean Alpha Conde passes the torch to his Rwandan counterpart, Paul Kagame. The tenant of Secretaria leaves the head of a Pan-African Union after engaging several reforms. Are the expectations surrounding this ordinary summit and also transition of power from one president to another? I would like to pay a well-deserved tribute to President Alpha Conde who led with determination and conviction our union during the year 2017. Mr. President, your Pan-African commitment and your energy was for the Commission. For me and my colleagues in particular, a priceless source of inspiration and motivation. Standing ovation for the Guinean president who led this organization with brio, according to his colleague. The worsening of the immigration phenomenon and the boasting of odious inhuman slavery traffic, the first consequence of demographic pressure, concern us and require concrete and targeted action on our part. But also we must take our responsibilities. We are no longer a union of presidents who protect each other. We have now become responsible heads of state who do not retreat from acknowledging their weaknesses and determined to overcome them. It's good to blame others, but let's look at ourselves first, our own responsibilities. Most of the problems African countries are facing are in particular foreign intervention and to compensate, Africans should take its destiny in its hands, reiterate the outgoing president of the Pan-African Union. The migration of our young people to other co continents and the most cruel situations they are facing in these perilous adventures are challenges we must resolve. The implementation of the recruitment initiative, the training and deployment of two million community health workers across continent illustrate our shared commitment in improving the health and well-being of our women and our young people. Now Kenyan opposition leader disregarded a call from the general attorney to sworn himself in as a people president. The ceremony was put together by Odinga National Super Alliance. Here's the report. Rayla Odinga, Kenya opposition leader, sworn himself in as a people president in front of thousands of opposition supporters who gathered Tuesday at Uru Park in central Nairobi. <laughs> Kenyan's opposition leader disregarded a call by the attorney general and proceed to this controversial earth. Anti-riot officers and vehicles were present at the event. Police fired tear gas at Odinga's National Supreme Alliance support. The Twitter page of Rally Odinga would change to this is the official account of His Excellency Rally Amolo Odinga, President of the Republic of Kenya. Following this contagious off, the government shut down the TV station that were broadcasting the event. Three months ago, Kenyatta won a second presidential term in a controversial rerun election. Kenya Supreme Court nullified the previous ballot. Odinga dropped out of the second vote, accusing the Electoral Commission not to implement reforms. This event was put together by Odinga's National Supreme Alliance, NASA, and their goal is to establish an alternative government to protest Kenya's rule. Now we head into South Africa. 955 mine workers of South Africa, a leading gold producer, have been rescued. 
This mine worker had been trapped on the ground when a power cut struck Wednesday last week. Few mine workers experiment dehydration and high blood pressure, but nothing serious. The accident is thought to have occurred when a storm knocked over the electricity piling close to the site, triggering a huge power cut. The repeal of the speech to the nation, the cancellation of ANC's meeting on Wednesday night to discuss the fate of the head of the state, the meeting between Cyril Ramaphosa and Jacob Zuma on the transition process are the vocal point that drive the debate on the imminence of President Zuma's resignation. The information fuels everywhere on the resignation. According to South African Daily, President Jacob Zuma has agreed to resign, but only with certain conditions such as humility. It is an ANC's best interest that President Jacob Zuma resign without constraint in order to avoid division among the party's members. However, a motion has been filed by the opposition to vote will take place in 10 days. Now, the Global Partnership for Education Conference took place in Dakar on the convive of Senegalese President Macky Sall and the French President Emmanuel Macron, established to support and improve the schooling of 264 children education around the world. The Global Partnership for Education aimed to raise $3 billion in order to finance GPE 2018 and 2020's year. The Global Partnership for Education Conference, chaired by President Macky Sall and Emmanuel Macron, was held in Dakar. During this meeting, several heads of state, dozens of ministers of education from around the world, representatives of civil society and the private sector also made the trip, including Audrey Azuli, General Director of UNESCO. This year, third Global Partnership for Education Conference slogan is Investing in the Future, and the goal was to raise $3 billion a year by 2020, an opportunity for Global Partnership for Education to call on developer countries to devote 20% of their government budget to education, to solicit financial and technical contribution and advocacy from philanthropic foundation and the private sectors. The Global Partnership for Education was created to support and improve the schooling of 264 million of children who can go to school around the world. Since 2002, Global Partnership for Education has achieved outstanding results. 2.3 billion dollars in Global Partnership for Education grant has been allocated to partner countries affected by a fragility and conflict since 2003. 76% of children completed primary school in Global Partnership for Education partner countries in 2015 compared to 63% in 2002. 50% complete lower secondary compared to 38%. 13.2 million children were supported by Global Partnership for Education in 2015 and 2016. Close to one-third of Global Partnership for Education partner countries had an advantage of one trained teacher for 40 students or less in 2014, up from one-fourth in 2013. 58% of Global Partnership for Education partner countries have good quality education plans or transitional education plans. At this occurrence was also present the singer superstar Rihanna who decided in her turn to support this initiative. Under the invitation of President Macky Sall, French President Emmanuel Macron inaugurated the first of 17 colleges built in Dakar, then announced the creation of a Senegalese French university with a science campus. Finally, an agreement has just been sealed between Angela Merkel Conservative CDE CSU bloc and the Social Democrat of the SPD with the intent to establish a coalition government. In the 28 pages of this agreement is introduced a generalized minimum wage of 8.5 year. This new fall more than a three months of negotiation. However, this settlement is just a step among others because on January 1st, the Social Democrat will decide during an extraordinary Congress whether to validate or not this agreement.
This time football, but not European football, but the American National League. The Philadelphia Sixers are Super Bowl 52 champion after upsetting the New England 41-33 win. And now the Eagles quarterback Nick Foles just had an amazing career with the Eagles after replacing Carson Wentz, leading the Philadelphia Eagles to the franchise's first ever Super Bowl victories. Here's Nick Foles after the game. You know, that was a hard-fought game. I mean, New England's a tremendous team. One of the greatest quarterbacks and coaches of all time. I didn't switch my mindset. I wasn't worrying about the scoreboard. I wasn't worrying about the time. I was just playing ball. You know, I, I was really staying in the moment. This is always the outcome, the goal. But I feel like if you put it on a pedestal, you start forgetting to do the little things, the preparation, the practice. You start forcing balls because you're trying to play at a level that, you know, so. When this became reality was when we won the NFC Championship game because that was what was staying in the moment. And I wasn't worrying about the next day. I was worrying about that moment. And that's what, you know, I did today, we did today. Just staying in this moment, doing everything you can in the moment to be successful. And the outcome was we were world champs. Thousands of Eagle fans massively deluged the streets of Philadelphia to celebrate their first Super Bowl winning in Philly. During the celebration, things turned a little ugly. The Eagles are a member of the National Football Conference, NFC East Divisions. And that's all for today. Make sure you check our social media pages at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at TheBridge365. Once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.